Hello everyone, this is Chuck Carnivale, co-founder of FastGraphs, the Fundamentals Analyzer software tool. This video is going to be all about the infamous white or honeydew colored line that is drawn on the graph to depict dividends. And I'm also going to discuss why we stack the dividends after they've been paid out to the shareholder on top of the orange line. I think these are kind of important questions. Some subscribers claim to be confused by it. So my goal is to kind of stop the confusion. So I'm going to start with Southern Company here, which is a very high payout ratio stock and I want to make sure you see something here. I'm going to take the price off. This company has grown earnings at 2.7%. A company's total return will always be a function of capital appreciation plus dividend income. And I've chose this example because it really clearly illustrates why we express dividends the way we do. So when I put price on here, you can see that price tracked the orange line and it started on the line and ended at the orange line. So when I look at growth, growth here has been 2.7%. Since we started at value and ended at value, the capital appreciation component or what we call the growth component is going to be precisely 2.7%. 10,000 would have grown to 14,899. But that's only part of the story. The company also pays dividends. So what we do is we plot the dividends on the graph and the green shaded area represents all the company's earnings. So what we do is we plot the dividends and we place the honeydew colored line. It looks white and I call it white now because I'm tired of arguing with people on the graph because this shows clearly instantly the payout ratio. This is a slow growth utility that pays out the vast majority of its operating earnings in the form of dividends and you can see that. So when I go down to the performance report, my payout ratio is in the 70%, mid 70% range. I can see that 70% of these earnings are paid out to the shareholder. Now then we take this area of the dividend okay, which we call the dividend payout ratio, and we literally stack it on top of the orange line. So that's what this green shaded area, this light green shaded area, it is not honeydew colored, it is light green, is exactly the same as this. This shows the dividends when they were part of the company as part of their profitability. This shows the dividends or they were paid out. And the reason we express it this way is because you clearly can see with this example, it's a quintessential example, that the capital gain component came from the price following the earnings going from point A to point B. There's your 2.7% you know, rate of return that correlates almost perfectly in this example with the 2.7% growth. However, your return also includes dividend income. And I'm not reinvesting dividends here. I'm simply conning them as paid out to you, the shareholder. And so you can see by this expression that in addition to this capital gain you got from the stock going from point A to point B, you also got all this dividend income. And then when you look at the performance, a $10,000 investment would have generated $4,899 in profit. But because the payout ratio was so high, it generated $8,919 in dividends for a total return of 6%. So the reason we express these things this way is so that we can essentially illustrate the payout ratio. Now, if I put the company Danaher up here on the graph, a company that historically has a low payout ratio, and I'll expand the graph out to its full measure here. By instantly looking at this graph, you can see that Danaher pays a very small portion. I'm going to take the price and the normal PE off. You can see that they do pay a very, very low portion of their dividends up through 2016 or 13. And then you can see that they actually increase that payout ratio. So if I go look at the payout ratio column on the performance report, you can see it was somewhere between, you know, roughly 3%, 4% on the high for all those years. And then more recently, it's moved up to double digits, 10, 11, 12, you know, 15% payout ratios. And you can see that this is 10% of all these earnings. This is 3% of all these earnings. So there's a real reason for it. Now I also want to make one other point here. This line is not white. It's actually honeydew colored. So if I took earnings off of the graph, we've shaded it here. The technical palette color of that line, unfortunately, is honeydew. But because when it is put inside the earnings line, it looks white. But it's actually, as you see when I color this, a light shade of green. 
but that is not the green that is on top of the graph where we stack the dividends on top to illustrate that they belong to the shareholder when they're stacked on top and they still belong to the company when they were inside. I hope this helps you all understand a little bit of why we designed the graphs the way we have. Now, for those of you who don't like to see the light green shaded area, my advice is just take it off of the graph. You can also go to the scrolling button here currently and go down to the settings persist. So now if I want to draw Southern Company again, go back to that high payout ratio company and draw the graph, I can draw the graph without the dividend stacked on top. And then, but now you've got to basically mentally say, okay, I got whatever the price capital appreciation was created by the price going to the earnings but then I got these dividends here. When I stack them on top, I'm now reminded that I got this capital price appreciation gain, capital gain, if you will, plus I got all this extra income up there. Now, just for fun, I do want to show you something else. The numbers that pop up on this white line would be as if the stock price fell to that line. So I'm going to use an example of a stock where that's happened. I'm going to put Tupperware here on the graph. And what I want you to see is that their price has actually fallen like this first time to where it got to the white line. But the pop up is simply telling you what the price is and what the PE ratio would be if the price hit that line. Similarly, we would have the same situation here at the end. This would simply say that if the stock, you know, fell to here, this is below the white line now, the P.E. ratio would be 7.6 and the price would be 33.45. If it was trading right on the white line, I want you to notice the box is still black, which is telling you that it's trading roughly, and I can't hit it there, there's close enough, where the P.E. ratio would be 9, the price would be 42. But I also can point to this white line here because when I'm doing calculations, I got to start with the black line, but I can go to any other plotted point on the graph and run a performance. So, you know, if it moved up to the dividend line, it would be that rate of return. If the price moved back up to the earnings line, it would be that rate of return. But in our future iteration, I'm going to quickly show you an example of our new and improved fast graphs. Now, in this version of fast graphs, when you point to the white line, let me reset these selections here for you. When you point to the white line, this isn't working yet. What we are going to do is put the date, the dividend yield, and then the dividend payout ratio. You can see it's not loaded yet. It says none right now. So we are going to change that so that the white line does offer that. And by the way, other parts of this new version of fast graphs that you might find interesting would be that instead of having to scroll like we do in the current version, everything else is going to work pretty much the same. You're going to have these orange buttons and everything's not working correctly yet that allow you to change your time frames where you can lengthen or shorten the time frames of the graph. But the thing that's going to be really I like best about this new version is when I want to look at performance, I simply click the performance tab. And if I want to go back to the historical graph, I go back. If I want to go to the forecasting graphs, I click that. And then I can still go through all the forecasting graphs here. But then if I want to see the analyst scorecard, I can go directly to the analyst scorecard. And if I want to go back to the historical, I can go back to the historical. So this is a sneak preview of what the new version of Fast Graph is going to look like. We're hoping to launch this with some additional features added to the graphing tool that aren't on here yet by January 1st of next year. Anyway, this has been Chuck Carnival saying thanks for watching. If you like what you saw here, please subscribe to our YouTube channel or you can go ahead and email us if you're not already a subscriber. This particular video was primarily for the benefit of subscribers. Anyway, thanks for watching.